Hello guys, I am back again for part two. As you can see, I have finished doing the fox. Um, I will link um, under the chat on underneath here um, this episode of me doing um, the, the tag because it's pretty much the same thing. Um, when I first started stamping the foxes, I did the watercolour, but I don't know if you can see that. It's, it's really started bleeding, but I thought I needed a little bit of colour. So what I did is I just got out my Inktense pencils or watercolour pencils. These are Prismacolor watercolour pencils. And then this was the same fabric. So I just coloured. You can colour it in. And if you want, you know, you can rub it in. Or if you, um, you know, where are we? So just get out. Probably the watercolour pencils are probably the best, or even just normal Prismacolor pencils. It has to be sort of soft, tested on the fa um, a little bit of fabric. Um, the piece that you get in the kit, there is a bit extra on the side, so maybe just test a little bit of stuff in the fabric. So I just sort of coloured it in just here. I'll just keep going here. I might even colour it in a little bit more there, actually. Um, left that white, left that white. Um, I stitched this down and I even coloured the edge a little bit because, um, because the backing of this was a little bit, you know, like that colour. So that's what you need to do. And then I've got little French knots, but you'll see, you'll see, I will link, um, this in the bottom of this video so that you can go and watch it and see the tutorial of how I made that. I think this one actually turned out a little bit better because um, I used this and I just went in. I, I didn't use the white. I thought the white stood out a bit too much so I used um, what did I use? I used this colour. Sort of like a lighter cream. Okay and then I went back in and I did um, colonial knots, which are just a little bit bigger than French knots in that this colour, just to hold it down. And then just a couple of like straight, straight stitches just along there to give it a little bit of a, you know, how they have that little bit on the underneath. So hopefully you guys can see that. And then what did I do? I just stitched that down, which I told you in the last one. Um, stitch that down just in the little bits and then put um, colonial knots on there too just so that they're a little bit bigger in a this colour which brought out that rustiness. Now each kit gets one of these and I've also delved in my button stash and they're not all the same because they I I've got this and also my little jaws here. I've had this. This is my mum's um, from my mum's stash. So I've got some buttons in there. So you get the genuine vintage buttons. Um, and they're special because they're from mum's stash. I made sure that they both complemented each other. Some of them are in... Um, here. Some of them are in, you know, like a little bit of red and all that kind of stuff. So you get your little, little pack of bits and pieces. So... Um, yeah, but they match each other and they, they go with that. So, um, I mean, that's the, that's the thing when you're getting vintagey stuff. So that's what you need to do with that. So, put this over here and then I'll put those away here. Now I've already started by getting out bits and pieces. So what I want to do is... Um, I'll put him over there. I've got these. Oh, I also went into the shop today and I bought this. This is just from a wool shop, but it's 100% cotton. So Bio Bimbo, I don't know what that's called. Um, wool isn't always cheap, but this is actually a, um, a cotton. So, and I just love the colours. So I'm probably going to be using some of that in here to do you know um like a little garden bed and all that kind of stuff so um i don't know it all depends how i go you, you may get some but i don't know because i've only just got this wool this one and that you know they're 13 dollars a roll <laughs> so but 
they're divided between 25 and you wrap a bit around these floss cards that's why I get them um, I'll see how I go because it's variegated you tend to get a lot there but then um, I quite like the colors that are in there too but I quite like that and matches really well so for now what we are going to do I'm getting I think I've already tried putting that down I've got a little bit of glue on there um, okay I'm going to put that here Wondering if I should put it up higher I think I need it a little bit higher and it needs to come up to cover that bit there there we go so what I'm going to do with this is do that first I think that's probably just the right colour and I'm going to tack that down just like I did with those and then I'm going to use this really nice one on here and I thought I might use some of that orange on there because it is autumn after all so a bit of orange and so I've already got the needles with the orange and that color going there but so what we need to do here is just tack that down and I'm probably going to use this color and probably this color in here so we'll start here And then just like the other one that we did we are just doing like a tacking stitch this is the only one that really needs to because this is sort of like thinner um, like quilting um, batik fabric and this is more you can get these in there sort of the cloth but they're a little bit sturdier so and that's not going to fray or on the outside so the stitching that we're going to be putting on here is actually going to hold that down so I'm not too worried about um, you know doing this type of thing around it and I think it's sort of kind of nice that it's going to be um, loose around it anyway so I hope you've enjoyed the process so far and you get where I am I'll also I've done the autumn along there and I'm going to be using some of this along there like I did in the in the uh, summer one because I want them to complement each other this is the opposite like in the summer one I put these on that side and the that on that side so because they're going to be next to each other so I want them to complement each other um, I've got some beautiful fabric in mind for the spring because spring is flowers so um, I really do I've got the I've got the batik every every piece has got a batik type of leaf on it but um, on top on top of the leaves I'm going to be putting this really nice fabric so there we go put that over um, each piece is beautiful I mean you guys would have already seen the finished quilt when you when I've been doing this because I'm, I'm filming this but I want to have the quilt ready the whole complete quilt ready to go before I show you all so um, this is a little bit weird for me that you guys they can have already seen everything all put together because I'm still in the process of making it okay so I'll just turn it off and I'll be back see you just tack it down okay we are back again so I've just tacked it down and I got to there I did a stem stitch and now I'm just doing straight stitches along the bottom of it and so what you need to do here I mean they're fairly loose so I might even come back with this and maybe do a couching along there we'll, we'll see 
see where that looks what you do is you go along to save yourself a bit of thread I'm going along the bottom of each of the lines just like I did with the um, the summer leaves and then you go up here and across the bottom there probably haven't got enough but enough to show you guys there and then you go up here just so you're not wasting it if you know what I mean the thread up here really adds to it go the way to there probably got enough to do this one and then I'll have to get more so finish that off and get more of that you're not using as much it's just um, along there so normally if you do a stem stitch you like you use twice as much so by going going across and then looping there and doing that you use a lot less thread which is a better idea always good to be saving on thread so I may I think that one is probably better. Um, I may end up doing a little bit of a stitch in that other one. Yep. Oh! Just looking at that, it's so cute. I really am happy with how that little mushroom turned out. It's so cute. So yeah, colonial knots on there and colonial knots on there. Um, colonials, I just make them because they're a little bit bigger. Okay. Now. It starts really underneath here. Go all the way into here. Go. And across, even though some of these don't go all the way, I just make it go all the way by doing that. So I'm going to leave that strand there just in case I'm not happy with how the couching in a different colour looks, but because it's got this colour in it. I think it may look alright, we'll see. Um, I was actually thinking of um, catching it in a, in a different way as well. For some reason, even though it's from a similar batch, this seems a little thicker than that. I don't know why. Okay. Now I was actually thinking of just sort of catching it a little bit here and there with this colour. same technique that we used in the other one gives it a little bit of texture so go along there it's a bit bigger so we might have 
Going across. They are them, wouldn't they? And they're catching it here. When I did the summer ones, I don't think I needed to do it because they just weren't as long. Um, but I thought, I think I like the idea of maybe doing this. Yeah, I like it because it's got the, both those colours in there. Quite like that, so I will have to finish that thread off. I'm probably sure that I'll use that for something else. So, every centimeter, I'd say, across, do a little slip, adds color and stops it from moving. I like that. That is nice. There we go. So, I may pause it again. Yeah, I like that. That's cool. Bring it up closer. There we go. I'll pause it. I'll do that and then I'll be back. And so, when you see me when I come back, I will probably, I'm going to use some craft glue to glue that down just in the middle there um, and then I'm going to proceed to stitch that so I'll be back. Back again, just um, finish that, I think that looks really good so it just brings out that highlights of that, it looks so good. Just making it a little bit different. So what I've done with these, these I have got um, I've just got the craft glue, so you just do, um, which is the same as your Fabrifix. So I'm going to do it in between where we're going to stitch. So it's going to hold it down, but um, same token, I want to be able to um, that to sort of sit right in the corner there I'll even put a little bit of glue down here I'll get a little bit of glue and put that on here too because that seems to be sitting up I may come back with a, a bit of a thread um, probably some of this light stuff um, this is really great because you it, I'll just come and just give it a little bit of a tacking stitch to hold that down because it will fray a little bit. I might even do a little bit on the over here and that'll help catch it so it won't um, fray. There we go. Might be okay. Do a little bit here and here. So, with this one here, I am going to do, use this beautiful variegated thread, and um, I'll just show you how to do it on the red one. Actually, I probably should show you, even though on this one, because it's going to be more likely for you to see it. Um, Now I'm bringing out the orange because I really do like the little bit of orange here in there. So what I'm going to do is I'll start here. And I'm going to use that brown that's on there as a guideline but not actually stitch on it. Stitch next to it because... I think it still needs that bit of brown and so we're just going to do a bit of a stem stitch going all the way down but I think it needs the brown so um, yeah I don't really particularly want to 
take away from that but at the same token it needs to be held down and it's got to go through all the layers so it's a guide um, but it'll still give us a little bit of shadowing because there's going to be quite a, you know I'm not going to be if you really want to and you're all you know you can probably do some of these but um, at this point I'm just going to be um, making sure that it's being held down so now the reason why I'm doing this first one because I think it needs oh, go back in the hole so once again it's a stem stitch lock here because I am wanting to create a um, like the end of the branch branchy bit okay so that's why I'm going in the middle And I may have it sort of curling over to the one side a little bit. That's cool. I won't have it too long. Maybe one more. But I would probably like it to be a little thicker just there. So I'm going to go back down through there. And come out just here and do another stem stitch going back all the way because I just want it to be a tad thicker on this part here because they always are stay and then we will stop that right at this core bit here. Won't go through the hole. Okay, now then I am going to go up here. So we'll go on the inside since that one. So you can see just that, that brown along there and so I've double stitched all the way to that part and then I'm going to so we're always going to keep it so the right side is going to keep the brown and then I'm going to go all the way to there may not I might stop around about there but then when I do here I'm going to do that there so I'm going to do all five of these and I'll see what that looks like can you see what I'm talking about how it's not quite the brown's the guideline and you go on the inside keeping that on the right hand side and you do on the left hand side of the brown so I'll pause it and I'll come back and show you what that looks like okay well I'm back oh I've got the music still on hang on a second pause it back again <laughs> I forgot about that I had because I um, had it in the background while I was busy doing it um, now I, um, I, I felt it really needed to be held down so some of the bits here see that's got a line there and that didn't but it needed to be held down there that had a partial line to about there um, I didn't want to go all the way to the end so just sort of follow do the main bits and then maybe a couple of other bits if you know what I mean so really like how that looks it's quite good and the orange just really stands out so I quite like that and that's the fact that you can still see that brown there that's good really complements the the orange on the bottom of it as well so pretty okay now in the kit you get this and that come from a really big um, little, was it container thing that I had. And it's got three 
strands, um, like a gold and I think a couple of gold anyway, or whatever it is. And some of it has got sort of the ready colour in there, and then some of it's got the green and whatever. But I just thought it was beautiful for for doing this. So I am going to be doing peel that off. That's why I want to do this now. Put that underneath here because I wanted to do it probably there. Now you will need a fairly thick. What I did, you have two knots in it, so leave the one knot that's already there, and I want it to twist it. Okay, so I'm going to twist that. And I'm going to go down. Where are we? Through there. Pull that through. Okay, and then we're going to do the couching. And I'm going to use this colour again because I think that is probably the most versatile. And I'll do this really quickly. Like the same a centimeter across really love it I'm using I actually got this um, this thread and other bits and pieces that I've used from um, the lovely Jenny Apple hello Jenny if you're watching this video she sent um, in was it maybe the beginning of 2020 maybe even 2019 um, this massive big box full of um, first she sent my, a no, the gnome book that I got and then all these threads I've got an unboxing somewhere so if you do I don't know whether I mean it's on the video it's down below <laughs> right down I've got over, over you know quite a few videos but it took me half an hour just to do this unboxing and I went through it fast. It was this massive big box full of threads and all that kind of stuff. So she was so generous. So um, I'm really happy to be using some of the bits that she has um, supplied. And she'll be happy that I'm using it as well. Okay, so I'm going to go around this. And sort of catch that on but I may even I've got enough um, oh, how good does that look I want to do another one just above it not, not even catch that with the thing twist again need twisting going in there That's straight there we go my summer one I think had four no three but I'm going to do these a little higher up because I'm going to have a garden bed and all that kind of stuff down there so here we go. So, what I'll do, quite thick fabric. So I'm just going to do a quick slip stitch. And you won't see that. I think you will, but just sort of hold that down. And then come up through. And we're going to do a slip stitch and a couching stitch along here as well. Okay. Now, in the thumbnail, you'll see the the finished 
bit I'll do the same technique on this one as that um, I like that it's got a little bit of gold that we're catching. Need to stay. going on a bit of an angle. I may have to pull that out and go a little bit further. You'll be able to see me twist it up again. Down. I think it's got to go there. Gee, it was really out. Definitely pays to um, tie it down. Have I got? Oh, there it is. Good for you to see some of the mistakes that I do, or well, not mistakes, but you know. a little more Go. Go underneath and I'd like to finish this off, like at least put that through there. I may have to get more of this thread, but at least it's tying that off. So that won't move anywhere, hopefully. Now I'm going up. And this should be enough to go now I'm looking here not going to be as big along a bit a bit okay but you get the drift of what I'm trying to do more of yellow which matches in really well with that but I might use the rest of this little bit here to hold this down so I can just pinch it just so it doesn't move all over the place that's going to make too much difference okay Finish this off off camera. And I 
threading re-thread. Okay. Yeah, chuck it in there. Now that can go there. So you even get enough left over. So I'm going to um, stitch that down. So what we want to do now is hmm, I may have to use this needle. Um, I'm going to open this up and find out where the start is. I'm not familiar with wool and how it all works. Here's the start of it. Wow. Oh, it's going to be one big messy. Is this the start? <laughs> well, you can tell I'm not a knitter. My sister is, but I can't find the start. Okay. Oh my goodness. Okay, well, I really like... Um, this colour in here. I think it's quite nice. Really like that it complements that. Um, oh, look, I'm going to pause it and try and figure out this tangled mess. I'll be back. Okay, I've sorted out the mess. Um, I've just come in with some green and I'm going to go in again with this lighter colour. Um, and I'll just sort of just show you quickly how easy it is. It's just straight stitches randomly all over the place. I just want a bit of glass and a bit of scenery. And then we're going to come in with French knots um, around French knots and um, might even go in on him as well and colonial knots oh. if you sort of see what I mean okay um, it's a long video but you sort of need to know what you need to do okay finish off So I'll come back in. I sort of wanted it green, but at the same token, I've got this greeny yellow colour which matches that, um, which I will pause and come back in maybe in between and I'll show you I'll just quickly. So I'm going to put it a little bit more here and some along there, maybe even some coming out there just to make a, just a small little garden bed along here so that's it I'll be back okay here it is with the little light highlight bits now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with this here and just scatter little bits and pieces I might even start with here um, it's fairly thick so I might just do A um, colonial knot, and these can represent either acorns or little flowers. And I won't. It's a really long piece. <laughs> Did manage to um, like here's a, another piece. I might use some of that later because it's got more of those colours in here. And then here's the other jumbled mess. So we'll have to figure that out. How I'm going to do that a bit later on. So. Once again, doing colonial knots um, here and there, and I'm using the quite a thick um, 
And this is what happens when you've got a really long, long piece. It tangles in. There we go. A bit too long. I wouldn't recommend it. But it's because I've tangled. So this is how you can use different types of um, threads. I usually like to do in little clumps of three. Three or five. And we're just going to scatter little flowers or acorns or whatever you want them to be, leaves, throughout this little garden bed. So I'll just sort of put them here and there, maybe some along there. and So it looks like it's got a bit of a, a garden bed. I like that. Sort of I got the inspiration from here, you know, when you do... See how they've got all the little French knots in between bits and pieces, so I quite like that. Um, you could probably even do, um, you know, some seed stitch here and there, which is almost like this. This is just a straight stitch. Anyway, I'll be, I've got to finish this. And then I will do... Um, come back with some lines like I did here because I quite like that but I don't know whether I will do the straight stitch but I'll show you in the next video where I'm starting the winter block I'll show you the finished lot of that so I'm going to be coming along here and just doing it and I like the way that it gets one less each time so something here there and probably there um, finish the little knots here finish that and I think we are pretty much done. Oh, that's right. I'm going to um, see how I go. I think because that's been glued down that it should be okay. I like that it's sticking up a little bit. But I love that. I think it's really cute. Um, also, in the pattern, um, I've got the word... I'll have the word fall as well. Like in... Australia and in England it's um, in autumn and um, but um, I know in America they use the word fall if you want to do fall um, yeah that's good too okay guys well thank you very much I just love it how it's looking you can see how it's sort of like one's going one way that's got those up there and it's only got the two um, and you know you could probably do little how I've done little bits there but I it I don't think it needs it just sim simplicity because everything else is you know a little bit more sort of stuff here so um yeah so i'll um i'll turn the camera off and continue doing some little french knots or colonial knots as you call them actually colonial knots Ugh, my goodness it's a bit long um yeah so that's that's the colonial knot was where you do the figure eight. See, and you got it because when you've got a really long stitch, you really need to make sure that it's coming through. Hold that down and pull. <laughs> it's really long. I definitely want to have some of the pink and all that kind of stuff in there as well, so um, I might just scatter them here and there. And it seems a little gappy, but I will, because of, at the moment I've got this colour, so, and further along it's got a different colour, so I don't want to have too many of the same, so I might do two here this colour and then go a little bit further and have a different colour so say about here there we go get the idea here and then when 
to come back with this other nice ready color which I think will complement that level really well um, I have a different different texture I just love it I think it's so cute so you can just imagine that with the little garden bed all filled and that lion cedar I definitely need it because it's still not quite being held down um, so I definitely need to do some sort of stitch along underneath there probably that just so it ties it in okay guys well thank you very much it's been another long video 45 minutes but it's all good um yeah i really love how it's coming along and once we've got this the other two on the other side it'll look beautiful okay i will catch you in the next one thanks for watching bye